The post-election violence in Kenya did not only cost lives, hundreds were displaced. Among those displaced were some 2,000 Kenyans who sought refuge in Uganda. Although a sizable number have returned home, at least 1,500 Kenyan refugees are still holed up at Chiriandongo refugee camp where they were given settlement by the Ugandan government. At this camp, ethnic profiling is a subject spoken with lots of regrets. Uh, they announced the results and then fracas started. Me as a one tribe of uh, president, we were accused that we have rigged election. <laughs> Actually, I, I couldn't understand how can I, I rig election and I'm just down the level. So, the fighting erupted. We had to run away to Uganda. Like Joseph Githu, life has been tough for the other refugees and as the institution becomes their way of life, they have to depend on handouts from humanitarian organizations for survival. The life is completely hard because sometimes when we have no rain, we have no something to eat. And also they, we, we, our, our people cannot get money from anywhere. Being a refugee is a bit challenging. Because when we came here, we were given land with empty hands. The government of Kenya, I can say, have neglected us. Since we came here, we have not had a penny. The challenges facing these refugees at Kiriandongo are enormous. The houses in which they live and sanitation facilities are in disrepair. Their children do not go to school and as a result, Many of the young girls here resort to prostitution to earn a living and keep them preoccupied. In Kenya, we had uh, uh, our husbands, some of them were business people, some were employees of the government or NGOs or whatever, but here they have no income. So they all look at you, asking for ugale, asking for good uh, mail, there isn't. And even for the education of children, well, the books, they come to mama. Whatever they need, soap, they come to mama. Today, though, they have been visited by familiar faces. Members of the Commission of Inquiry set up after the 2007 elections to investigate the gross human rights violations and other historical injustices in Kenya the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission. The commission was here in Kiriandongo to hear firsthand their feelings about reconciliation efforts being undertaken by the Kenyan government. And so what we are doing also at the same time here is to record statements from the refugees who like to share their story with Kenyans to show how they have also been affected by historical injustices to ensure that the refugees are not left out in this process of truth-seeking, justice and reconciliation. The truth, justice and reconciliation process provides the mechanism to ensure that the violations do not recur. The commission says over 2,900 statements have been recorded so far. But the Kenyan community here in Chirandongo want their government to come up with real solutions to their problems. Topmost in their minds is an assurance that when they return home, they will enjoy security. When you go to Kenya, everything is okay. People are moving by. But it is just a tick of an iceberg on politics and then the war. Because these have been continuing. My call is that if government of Kenya can hear our voice, they can get us back home and they get us somewhere to, to stay. That's a piece of land and also to give us uh, just how we can stay for one year. There are over 1,000 Kenyan refugees living in this Kriandongo camp. Many of them live in appalling conditions and are yearning to go back home. But they are hesitant because they're not sure of their security back home. They feel forgotten by their own government. And they're looking at the commission as a ray of hope. Hope that they may be going back home very soon. Michael Baleke, NTV, in Chiriandongo.